Hello, welcome to the Academic Support Center's APA 7th edition video resource. My name is Rebecca and I'm one of the professional writing tutors working in the Academic Support Center at St. Lawrence College. During this video, I will be highlighting the major changes students should be aware of as we transition from the 6th to the 7th edition of the APA style. As we move through this presentation, remember that there is further support available to help you with this and other important writing topics. As you may know, the Academic Support Centre provides free services for St. Lawrence College students. We deliver resources such as online and hard copy guides to APA, tutoring in areas including English writing, math, accounting, and science, workshops covering a range of broader help areas, and classroom visits and presentations to help students develop key skills. This presentation will focus on highlighting the differences between 6th and 7th edition, but for more information, consider consulting the APA Style 7th Edition Format, Reference and Citation Guide available on the Academic Support Centre website, or scheduling an appointment with a writing tutor to help you as you apply this new style to your writing. To make it easier to navigate through this information, changes have been organized into five topics. APA Standards of Professional Writing, APA Format, APA In-Text Citation, APA References, and digital object identifiers. As we move forward, I will draw special attention both to the ways the new style differs to the old and the previously unaddressed assumptions that have now been cemented in the rules. Remember you can pause this video at any time if you want to take notes or you can return to earlier sections to review material. Refer to the written transcript of this presentation for a hard copy guide to the information presented. I will begin with two important changes to the standards of professional writing. First, the American Psychological Association now requires the use of a singular they as a personal pronoun in cases where it is preferred by the individual or if the gender of the individual being discussed is unknown or unimportant in the sentence. For example, the nurse said they did not know the answer is now considered the proper format for this sentence, rather than saying the nurse said he or she did not know the answer. Second, the new APA style requires the use of personal pronouns, such as I or we, to describe the actions of you as the author or authors. Traditionally, authors were told to exclude themselves from their writing, using phrases such as the author concluded or it was concluded that. This is no longer necessary, and the APA requires direct, active voice. When discussing your own work, you would say, I concluded the factor was unimportant, or, if you are working with one or more group members, we visited the Queen's University Archive. An important note on this topic, however, is that you should never use an editorial we, which is when we is used to refer to all people, or people in general. I went to the archives, but you would say people should care about the environment, not we should care about the environment. Remember, this change is meant to allow you to directly state the actions undertaken by you, the author, or to share your opinions. Do not add unnecessary personal pronouns. It's rarely necessary to state that you believe or you conclude something in your writing. You should still say, these results indicate students care about the issue, not, I believe these results indicate students care about the issue. The next topic is APA format, and there are several important changes in how papers are organized. First, note that the APA has loosened restrictions on the font of papers. The 7th edition prioritizes consistency and requires that the font be a legible size and type and officially endorses a range of possibilities, including Times New Roman 12 point, Calibri 11 point, and Arial 11 point. For a longer list of possibilities, consult one of the print resources on this topic. Remember that 2.0 spacing is still required for all elements of the paper, and no space should be added before or after paragraphs. Margins continue to be set at 2.54 centimeters, that's one inch, on all four sides. And the text must still be left aligned rather than justified. If your paper requires headings, Note that increased standardization has meant that all headings are now placed in bold, and the first letter of each important word is now capitalized in every level of heading. The first and second level heading styles continue unchanged from the last edition. 
However, where previously the third level heading was almost entirely lowercase, had no italics and was indented, it is now in italics, flush with the left margin, and has the first letter of each important word capitalized. The fourth level heading was previously in italics and was almost entirely in lowercase. Now the first letter of each important word is capitalized and there are no italics. This heading should still begin with an indent as if it was a normal paragraph. Finally, the fifth level heading is now in bold and the beginning of significant words are capitalized, in addition to being in italics and indented from the left margin. I will briefly overview the formatting changes impacting each element of the APA style essay. Remember that components should always appear in the same set order, and remember that most student papers will require only the title page, body of paper, and references. Use elements such as the abstract, tables, figures, and appendices only if they were requested by the assigning instructor or are necessary to communicate your point or argument. The APA has created a new format for all student title pages. First, note that the running head has been eliminated as an element of this page and every page that follows. However, page numbers should still be inserted into the upper right corner of all pages, beginning with the title page. The title should appear three or four lines down from the top margin, remembering that all lines should be double-spaced, and is now in bold. Insert a blank line following the title, and then provide your name. On the next line, the APA has inserted a new requirement, called the affiliation. On this line, you will provide the department or school with which you are customarily associated. Remember that you're providing the department or school that will ultimately be providing you with your degree, diploma, or accreditation, so this should not change depending on the class you are currently taking. For example, if your program is a part of the School of Business, you would write School of Business, St. Lawrence College, even if your essay is for a general education course. On the following line, provide the course code and the course title of the class to which you are submitting the essay. The next line should provide the name of the instructor who assigned the essay. Use whatever title they indicate is suitable. Finally, on the last line, provide the month, day, and year the assignment is due. If you're required to supply an abstract, it will be the next page of your paper. Again, remember that there is no longer a running head, but the page number should continue in the top right corner. The only specific formatting change to the abstract is that the section heading, Abstract, should now appear in bold. The range the APA provides for the word count is approximate, and is ultimately at the discretion of the assigning teacher. The body of the paper still begins on a fresh page after the abstract. In addition to the absence of a running head, note that the title of the paper is now in bold, using the style of a Level 1 heading. This title is now officially considered a heading in the paper, so there should never be a subheading, such as Introduction, applied to this section of the paper. If further headings are needed, another Level 1 heading can be introduced after the introductory section. The rest of the body of the essay does not differ from the 6th edition version. Note the use of the third level heading leading the third paragraph on this page, but remember to only use the levels of heading you need to adequately organize your paper. Following the body of the paper, you should provide a reference list containing entries for every work cited in your essay. Shortly, I will highlight the changes the seventh edition has made to reference list entries. For now, note that the references heading is now in bold. If your work contains tables or figures, you have two options. The first is to place the tables or figures within the body of the paper, each table or figure inserted directly after the paragraph in which it is first called out. The second option is to group tables and figures together and place them at the end of the paper, as shown here. In that case, the table section appears first, and all the tables are provided in the order in which they are called out in the text. That is, Table 1 is the first table to be mentioned, Table 2, the second to be mentioned, and so on. The figure section is arranged in the same way and follows after the last of the tables. Remember, you may only include tables or figures that have been called out within your body text to support your points. For example, you would instruct your reader to see Table 2 for more information. 
In order to qualify as a table, the image you are using must collect data in a series of columns and rows. The biggest change in the presentation of tables is the note. Placed under the table, the note should provide any necessary clarifications to the data and, if the chart is wholly or partially from another source, it should state that it is adapted from or reprinted from the source, which is given in the order of title, author, year, journal title, volume, issue, page number, where the image appears, DOI, and then copyright information. Figures, which are images that are not tables, appear after the table section. The format for figures has changed in order to mimic the table style. The figure number now appears in bold at the top of the page. The title of the figure appears in italics, one line lower, followed by the image. The note is configured in exactly the same manner as the table note, including any necessary information for interpretation and the citation if the figure or part of it originated elsewhere. Remember, when tables and figures are placed at the end of the paper rather than in the body, each must begin on a new page. Finally, the appendices remain in the last section of the essay. Note that the heading Appendix or Appendix A is now in bold, as is the title centered beneath it. Additionally, the first paragraph of each appendix is now indented, whereas it was flush left in the sixth edition. The purpose and role of in-text citations, providing credit to original authors and directing readers to the correct reference list entry, has not changed. However, the seventh edition of APA style has made some important alterations to in-text citations. All in-text citations require the author's surname and year, while the direct quotations also require the specific part of the source where that quotation was found. Note, however, that while paraphrased text still does not require the specific part of the source as a citation element, the APA now suggests that it is useful to include this information in all citations. A substantial change has been introduced to the manner in which authors are displayed in these citations. Works with one or two authors are cited as they were in the 6th edition. For all works attributed to more than two authors, the citation now consists solely of the name of the first author and the notation et al. This is true of the first and every occurrence of the citation. The display of the year has not changed for in-text citations, but do note that only the year should be displayed in text. Even if the reference list entry includes the month and day of publication, only the year should appear in these in-text citations. As always, use the notation ND if there is no date associated with the work. The system for sharing the specific part of the source has now been updated to reflect generally accepted practice. Page numbers are used, if they are available, as before. For non-paginated works, such as websites, the APA has validated a choice between several options. Authors may choose between providing the paragraph number for the information, the heading preceding the information, or a combination of the two in order to direct readers to the correct part of the source. For audiovisual works, such as movies, videos, and CDs, the APA has now affirmed the practice of using a timestamp to indicate the beginning of the material being referenced. Reference list entries have not changed substantially in their purpose and role as they continue to lead readers to the sources cited by sharing the author, date, publishing information, and DOI or URL of the sources used in the essay. However, changes have been made to many types of reference list entry, and the categories defining reference list entries have been shifted to accommodate more forms of electronic media. I will briefly examine three common types of sources and the changes that have been made by the 7th edition. However, Remember that it is valuable to seek more information about the specific requirements for the type of source you wish to cite. Most of the required information for referencing a book remains the same from the 6th edition. However, remember to provide a DOI if one is available. Additionally, note that the location of the publisher, formerly shown as the City of Publication, has been removed as a citation element. Journal article references require the same information that they did previously, but an important change in the display of that information particularly impacts these entries. 
DOIs must be provided if they are available, and they are now displayed in link form. The APA states that these links should be active hyperlinks, which the reader may use to access the source if they are reading the paper in electronic form. The APA also states that it is acceptable to display these links either in plain text, so they appear the same as the rest of the text, or in the blue underlying text that is the default display for many computers. Whichever display method you choose, you should be consistent throughout your work. Either all links should be blue and underlined, or all links should be black and not underlined. Information from websites falls into several better defined categories in the 7th edition of APA style. These entries should include the author, date, title, website, and link to the original information. The notation retrieved from has been eliminated before the links. And, like the DOIs, these links can now appear either in blue, underlined text, or plain text. While authors are listed in the same form as in the 6th edition, separated by commas and an ampersand before the final author, a change has occurred in that this system is now used for up to 20 authors. If a work was authored by up to 20 people or organizations, all of the authors are now shared in the reference list entry. If a work has 21 or more authors, the first 19 authors are written in the reference list entry. Then an ellipsis is inserted and the last author's name is provided. The presentation of dates has been somewhat formalized and it is expected that the year will be provided for books and journal articles. Entries for newspaper articles and websites use the year, month, day format to display the date if that information is available. As before, if the source provides no date, the notation ND takes its place. DOIs are unique codes that provide stable access to a range of works. They can frequently be found either printed on the work itself or online in the Crossref website. Given the ever greater availability of digital object identifiers, I would like to provide a final reminder that either the plain text or the blue underlined format is now acceptable in the new APA style. In either case, remember that the link should be live, allowing readers to access the work electronically by following it. This concludes this video presentation. If you still have questions regarding the changes present in the 7th edition of APA Style, you can find further information in the Publication Manual of the American Psychological Association, 7th edition. You can seek further support and assistance from the Academic Support Centre, or you can address questions to your course instructors. Thank you for your attention and best of luck with all of your assignments.